Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and that wonderful spectrum in between. I am Necrostevo. That was Anima's intro that I just copped right there. And uh, I'm finally back to have a wonderful um, Sazendora upload for you here. A triple header, a Hydreigon, a Dodrio. I have reasons for my lack of uploads. And we will get into those shortly. For now, I just want to give you the battle. So up first, we have our battle up against Gator from three weeks ago. And you can see here, I brought a Rotom. I brought... I also have a Halucha. Uh, Rotom, of course, has hidden power ground. I was really happy to breathe it on there for the Heatran. Uh, Halucha is a power herb, um, sky attacks type set. Uh, Alakazam is a modest set with Substitute, Focus Blast, and um, Psychic and Calm Mind. Then we have our Araquanid, which is actually a specially attacking Araquanid that I didn't get to um, use before. A very bulky Togekiss and a pretty bulky, physically offensive Metagross. Now, Gator has a very threatening team, very balanced overall, and um, there's a lot of power in that balance as well. Of course, Buzzwool was the original fighting type that I wanted for my team, so I was like, oh man, I gotta really show out here. Uh, he does start out with his Flygon, which is one of his Z users, and he switches out to Heatran on the Will-O-Wisp. I didn't feel like that was too bad of a deal there, because the worst thing Heatran could do is go for Ancient Power, and that wouldn't 2 it KO me. Uh, the Hidden Power Ground does not 2 it KO him, which means he is very, very, very bulky, which is fine. Uh, this Heatran is going to be a pain in my butt, so I definitely am glad that I got damage on it. Now, I just go for a Hidden Power Ground again as he goes out to the Altaria. Not a big deal because I can Volt Switch out of here, see how fast he is. I can go for a Will-O-Wisp, like I have a few options. So I do just Volt Switch right out, and we're going to go out into my Togekiss. Now, that was a misplay. I really should have gone for the burn. I figured he might, um either try try setting up or uh, this was a little bit more specially defensive Togekiss and here I just get outright to a KO because of the rocks on the field so that was not um, the optimal way to use my Togekiss in that situation uh, that's okay though because I can bring back in a Rotom and threaten him I go for a will -O again I didn't think he would go out to his um, Heatran right there but I was like cool he'll probably double back now no he just stays in and goes for Toxic so I just gave Heatran all these flash fire boosts for no reason, uh, making unnecessary predictions. Like again, I really just need damage on the Heatran, and so I should have been going for Hidden Power Ground. And then now he swaps out into his um, uh, Altaria. So at least now that it's Mega Evolved, I can hit it before it was part flying type, so the Hidden Power Ground didn't even affect it. Um, and I do get a burn off on him here. If I had just kept on going for my Will-O-Wisp, I would have hit him on the way in and I could have Volt switched out, uh, but he, he definitely caught me on the turn where I was sleeping there. Um, thinking that, okay, well, at least he's burned. Uh, if he goes for the frustration here, my Metagross won't take that much damage or maybe he'll go for Dragon Dance. No, he has Heal Bell, so that means all that with the Will-O-Wisp was a waste of time. And I was very close to clicking Zen Headbutt here, just on the off chance that he brought in the Buzzwool, but I really wanted to get good damage on the Altaria. At this point, the game plan needs to be spread as much damage as I can around in order to allow Haluch to clean up. Uh, I bring in a Raquin in here, knowing that he's going to go for the fine type move. And I, I honestly completely forgot that Buzzwool got Thunder Punch. Um, so that just... Again, not an optimum play there. Uh, I could have very easily swapped back out into my Rotom. Um, even with the rocks up, I would have been able to take whatever he dished out and then gone for an offensive move. 
Um, I had options there, and I just, I just legitimately forgot he got that move. Now with Alakazam in, uh, his whole team gets kind of bopped by Alakazam, especially because I'm modest for the extra power. Um, Battle Armor is not a great ability to trace here. I would have loved to get Beast Boost. Uh, but I do go for a substitute here, and I miss my Focus Blast. If I had hit Focus Blast, this would not even, I would have still had my Alakazam. But I was sure that he probably had Pursuit, which he does, and I can't really do anything at this point. Um, I would have been able to very easily 2 a KO the Drapion after we, especially how much we see this first Focus Blast do. That almost uh, knocks it out of one move. He did have Air Balloon. Uh, predicting me to have Hidden Power Ground, but getting Hidden Power on one Pokemon is difficult enough, letting, let alone trying to breed it for multiple Pokemon. Now here we're just going to come in here and go for High Jump Kick. I wanted to save my Power Herb for uh, the... Um, my idea was if I could activate it on something like Flygon, then say Flygon were Scarfed or something like that, and then I'd outspeed it after I hit him with it if he like tried to swap in or something like that. Uh, Finally, we get him to get a little bit of extra chip damage as he attacks into Rotom and knocks it out with my Rocky Helmet. And now I was like, all right, well, I'm in a decent position, but he has Cotton Guard as, as his final move, which of course boosts his defense to the point to where I will not be able to 2 it KO him, especially after plus six. He's, he's maxed, he's tripled his defense, and I'm not going to be able to do the damage that I need to do to him between the Roost and the Cotton Guard. Now, a crit here would be great, an attack boost would also be great, but neither of those are things to rely on. I do go for Bullet Punch here just to get a little bit more damage tacked on there, because I didn't know how much his frustration would do. Not very much, but he has Roost and I have no means of recovering my HP. So this is not going to be a, a, a war that I could win. Unless I get a crit, which I do right here, the crit was definitely needed to take out that Altaria. That was probably a four hit KO without the crit. Um, but he has his Clef Key in the back and I no longer have my Rotom, so I can't really stop this Clef Key very easily, especially with his Clef Key setting up Reflect, which very much stifles my Halucha. Um, I really did not want to go for Earthquake again. I was worried he'd go out into Flygon. But I was like, okay, again, I just need to put damage on things. I, I was so much in the back foot, I really wasn't in a position where I could make plays, per se. Um, it would have been a much better play to go for uh, Meteor Mash there, because then, number one, the crit chance, and number two, the raised attack chance that I could have gotten, because Dragon Dance now allows him to outspeed my Halucha, and the plus one attack allows him to finish off my Metagross from that range. Um, with the plus one speed from Dragon Dance, my Halucha will not be able to outspeed the uh, Flygon just because of that high, high speed. That, I mean, base 100 plus one, that's a great speed tier to be in. And he does finish off my Halucha with an overwhelming power of the Continental Crush. I'm getting flashbacks from um, Tom using Continental Crush on my Rotom in the first week. And so that was the end of that battle. That was a loss on our side, 0 and 4. And I just, that was the first battle of the season where I just don't think I played well. Um, with the way that I utilized Araquanid and Togekiss in that battle, I might as well have not brought them to the battle. It would have been much more effective to either stay in with the options that I had or make less aggressive switches. So. Uh, I that being said, I did enjoy the match. Uh, it, Gator brought some cool sets, especially with the Altaria, so I did enjoy things. We're going to move into the second match now. Now here in match two up against Wolfie Glick, I am just going to go ahead and say that I screwed up. I actually prepped for the wrong team. I was going on a trip. It was like a long 12 hour drive whole ordeal thing and i wrote down my teams in my journal that i was going to be prepping on and preparing because i wasn't going to have wi-fi and such to check the teams on the go and i wrote down um aaron cybertron zhang's team and so right before i went to battle wolfie i noticed that i had written down the wrong team and so there was no strategy going into this because i just pulled a team together in like three minutes 
Um, my idea was, okay, he has a bunch of bulky Pokemon. I need to wall break as much as I can and try to open up something for Hot Lucha. Now, I did have the tech in mind of putting Psychic Terrain on my Alakazam and adding the Psychic Seed to my Halucha because once certain walls on his side were removed or weakened, then Halucha could pretty easily clean up. I did get the lead matchup correct with Delmice here, expecting him to lead off with Bronzong for wanting rocks there, but uh, that didn't come to pass. We do knock off the Figgy Berry on Conkledor, which is really nice, because that would have been really, really annoying to knock him down to low health and then have him get all that health back. Uh, and the Colbert Berry was, a, I just really grabbed what I thought would work best against his team in the moment. Uh, it might have been more appropriate to say, hey, Wolfie, I totally didn't prep properly, but that was my issue. Um, he was ready to go when I knew he had a schedule that he was trying to adhere to as well. And so I just kind of rolled with it. Uh, I, on the plus side, I bred a really cool team to go up against Eren and Cybertron and Zang, an opponent that I don't even have to face. Uh, but that doesn't matter. For this matchup, um, I really wish I had caught this Tangrowth on the way in with a Toxic. That would have been so joyous. I was afraid that he would stay in with a Conkledur with it at such low HP and he, with its speed and Mach Punch not being very useful against what I brought this week, I didn't think he would save it, and I really didn't want to give him guts in case he decided not to save it, uh, which is why I went for Liquidation. But I'm going to speed this up because this is a whole ordeal, and this is actually um, a rest set that I have on this Araquanid. Uh, again, none of these Pokemon were bred or trained or EV'd or anything specifically for this battle. I basically just had to grab what I had already bred. And fortunately, I have a lot of Araquanid and Diggersby bred. Um, and Diggersby is Scarfed for this matchup. Um, I'm sorry, Diggersby was Bandied for this matchup, excuse me. Uh, just because the speed tier was kind of, I had to go Jolly with the, the Choice Band for it. Now this I sped up because without getting Toxic on his Tangrowth, it can kind of wall my team around a lot. I finally do go out into Alakazam, and then I double back to Diggersby, hoping that he would swap out to his Muck after seeing my Alakazam. And finally, we got the Tangrowth off the field. That took a long time. Now, I could have gone for U-Turn here, uh, but if he decided to stay in with the Muck, there was a chance I could KO Muck with Return, and so Return was a good middle ground play that would hit the Tangrowth very hard, and unfortunately, the Rocky Helmet and the, the Toxic Damage is, is stacking up, but it also would have had a chance to KO the Muck. Whereas Earthquake would, not, of course, not have KO Tangrowth. And um, U-Turn was a decent middle ground play too, but I didn't really have a lot to go out into if I went for U-Turn on the Muck. I would have had to let something take a knockoff or maybe even a Gunk Shot or um, something like that. So now that we're in here with my Alakazam again, I thought he would expect me to double out again, which is why I stayed in. Uh, Cause the switch to Muck on Alakazam is really obvious. And uh, I just went for Focus Blast here thinking that he would expect me to double, but he just stays in as well. That's okay. Um, Cause I'm gonna go for Psychic Terrain, knowing I can live any one hit that he goes for here, especially if he goes for Pursuit, expecting me to swap out. Uh, he does go for Pursuit, and unfortunately I didn't take the Toxic into account. I thought I was going to be able to get off one more Focus Blast on him. And here is where I find out that I gave my Halucha Misty Seed instead of Psychic Seed. In my haste before the battle, I gave it the wrong item, and so nothing activates when my Halucha comes in, which means my Acrobatics move isn't powered up, and that also means that I don't have extra Spadef against his... Florges or against the Bronzong if the Bronzong were carrying special type moves and that was just kind of demoralizing because like I already was put myself at such a disadvantage and basically not prepping before the battle and then I grabbed the wrong item uh, which sucks because I would have had a chance to show off some cool tech here with the um, psychic terrain and unburdened set uh, after the swords dance actually if I had gotten rid of my item um, I might have been in a position to still two-hit KO the Reuniclus with um, Acrobatics. But since I'm holding an item, Acrobatics is so weak that it's not even going to come close to two-hit KOing it. Uh, 
but I am going to go for acrobatics anyway because I was just trying to put some damage on here and I think that damage doubled it would have been a roll maybe um, I would have at least been able to stay in with Halucha against the Renaclus. Um, but also we have to count Trick Room turns here. And here I thought, okay, he's probably going to go for another Acid Armor knowing that I can't do anything to him. And so I went for another Swords Dance, not expecting him to take out my Substitute. But he does just take out the Sub, which was a little bit of a misplay on my part. I should have just gone for another Sub because then I could have forced him uh, to either swap out or recover or do something because the Trick Room would have run out after that turn. But I am going to go into Togekiss here because since he's running Acid Armor, I'm not expecting him to have a lot of special attack investment, especially with how well he took the uh, plus two um, Drain Punch, for example. Uh, the Trick Room does run out finally, and this is actually a nasty plot Air Slash Togekiss with Thunder Wave and Roost. So it's kind of designed to um, stall break by itself, just like hit something with the Thunder Wave, and then flinch it down and get off some nice nasty plots in order to boost my own attacking prowess. This is actually a really bulky Togekiss, so it doesn't have a lot of special attack investment, but that's made up by the fact that I have Nasty Plot. Now as he brings in Florges on my Togekiss and goes for a Wish, I'm not really threatened by the Florges at all, and I was thinking maybe I should get up another Nasty Plot, but I was worried his Florges would have Heal Bell, and so I was like, all right, we should probably just hit it, or I should keep on trying to spread Thunder Waves around. And so expecting him to pass a wish out to his muck, I decide to click Thunder Wave again, which is perfect because yes, he does get the wish off, but I would, based on how he took that Focus Blast from my Mega Alakazam, I wouldn't have KO'd him with the plus two, almost uninvested Air Slash anyway. And then we see that damage there. No, we would not have. Now he misses a Gunk Shot here, which is huge. I'm really bulky, but I don't know if he's more bulky or offensive. I might have lived it if he didn't have like any offensive prowess at all in there. I do miss an air slash on the floor just coming in to make up for the gunk shot missing, which is annoying because I could have probably two it KO'd it because I missed another air slash there. And between the flinch chance and the paralysis, I might have stopped him from getting rid of the paralysis on the muck. So, um, based on how his muck was taking the hits, I would guess that he was a little bit more bulky. Now we have to start this all over. I have to paralyze the Florges again. And after all that, he has a full HP, basically, um, Florges and a Muck that's no longer paralyzed. So I'm going to go ahead and say he got the better end of that deal. But that's okay, because I'm not giving up on this game plan. Uh, again, the, the general idea here is that I have to put as much damage on things as I can. And he's clearly trying to keep things as healthy as he can by using Florges to support. Um, as the Muck comes in here, I was like, all right, uh, let's try to dodge another Gunk Shot. And I do dodge another Gunk Shot. Uh, there, I was pretty certain I could live it again, just because I was thinking he was more bulky. But if I wouldn't have lived it, then I would have had to go out into either my Diggersby or my um, Halucha to finish it off there. So I would have had some options afterward, but I would have been minus Togekiss. Now here, he goes for Trick Room again. Uh, I was thinking he probably had the steel type move for my Togekiss. He goes for Stealth Rock here because he knows I have to fall, stay asleep for a turn rather. But I thought Araquanid could take anything that this Bronzong wanted to dish out bar like Explosion, but he actually reveals Rock Slide, which is a great bring because it would have hit my Togekiss as well. That's unfortunate because I do not have the capability to survive another Rock Slide and I would have woken up after this turn and I would have been able to get off a great liquidation on the Bronzong, but now I don't have any damage on the Bronzong still, and I really need some sort of damage on it in order for my Halucha to do something here. Now I do decide to go into Delmize because I need to get rid of these Stealth Rocks immediately. Uh, my Togekiss can't really switch in too much here, and then my Delmize, of course, takes neutral damage from the Stealth Rocks. I just don't want to deal with them if I can avoid it. My other idea there was to go for a knockoff in order to get rid of the Rocky Helmet so that my Halucho wouldn't take too much residual damage. But, uh, yeah, we're just going to go for the Heavy Slam here just to get as much damage as possible, but it doesn't do anything <laughs> to the Tangrove. Ah, uh, that was very disappointing damage. I really should have gone for a knockoff over the Heavy Slam. Um, yeah, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't even in a position to to calc for any of this because number one 
I didn't know my own spreads. I didn't have my phone. I didn't, like, I was, when I say I really screwed this battle up, guys, like, I was playing at such a disadvantage and so tilted. I still think that um, I had a good chance here with Banded Diggers being in the back. I'm able to pick off the uh, Conkledur, which is nice, just because I don't have that threat of Mach Punch in the back. But without the ability to break through Tangrowth and Reuniclus, and to a lesser extent, a full health Bronzong, I really am going to struggle here to, to break through things. Now, there's going to be a little bit of uh, a stall war again here, just because of the nature of he needs to keep his team as healthy as possible. And I need to get my Togekiss to a point to where it can try to set up again. But of course, he's wise enough to not let me do that. He's just going to continue to go for Psy Shock to try to keep on whittling me down. Um, and of course, the whole time I'm not attacking him, he's just getting HP back from his leftovers. I go for Air Slash, hoping for a flinch, and I don't get it. So now I have to Roost again for sure on this next turn, which kind of gives him a free swap out. And I was afraid of that, but I needed the health on my Togekiss. I was not really in a position. And of course, Togekiss can't even touch Bronzong anyway with its moveset. I could have paralyzed it, uh, possibly powering up a Gyro Ball, which wouldn't be great. Um, and I do miss the Thunder Wave there, so I don't even get the chance of paralysis on the, the um, Bronzong. He does reveal Iron Head. By that damage, we can see that the there's some investment there, I would guess, um, but not enough to, to one-shot me, of course. And with the Trick Room back up again, this is going to be a tough uh, nut to crack here just because I, I'm going to bring back in my Halucha because I have an opportunity to set up a Substitute to help waste Trick Room turns. That's the only reason I went straight for Substitute. Um, he is going to go for Acid Armor again, and I just went straight for Acrobatics hoping that he would just break my sub. But he does not. Um, and without plus two, I can't really touch him now that he has he has plus two defense um Psy shock is going to easily be able to take out my substitute and with acrobatics is just such a weak move when you're holding an item man i would have loved to have the psychic seed and get rid of that but that was my own just terrible foresight and trying to hurry up and throw a team together and i just picked the wrong item it was really just that simple um but that being said, I do think I brought a pretty good team to this battle. Um, I'm not going to be able to clinch it out in the end here just because of... I would need to get uh, probably 8 or 10 flinches or paralyses on the Bronze Song in order to take it out. And he does get up the Trick Room, which means now he's going to be able to attack before I get a chance to use Air Slash. So now I have to rely on just the Paralysis Chance. And that does not happen. I do barely live the Iron Head, but once again, we just need one turn of paralysis and I don't get it. So that's going to be the end of this game. As soon as I come in with my Diggersby, uh, he's a little bit low on health. My opponent has my Rocky Helmet item just right there on, on him. Um, Fire Punch did a lot of damage. I was actually pretty impressed by that. Fire Punch was the only move I could lock into here and have a chance at victory. Say I like crit the Tangrowth and then I crit everything all the way down the line. Fire Punch was the only way that I could do it anyway. So unfortunate, but that is what happens when you rush into a game and also what happens when you write down the complete wrong team to prep for. Um, that being said, I really enjoyed that road trip that I was on. Um, it was a lot of driving, but um, very interesting. I haven't really been on a road trip in a while. Wolfie, thank you so much for the battle. So that's another loss for the Victorian Shadows. Uh, another 0-4 loss, rather. So now we're going to move on to match number 3. Alrighty, so the Week 8 matches up against MV and the San Diego Chem Chargers. And finally, we have our heads on straight for this battle. Uh, I had ample time to prep. I got to breed how I wanted to. No road trip, no bull crap in the way, or me letting things get in the way, rather. Because it's all in what you make time for. We have a Specs Rotom. A nice and 
cool trapper set on my Araquanid that's very especially defensive. We have our Choice Scarf Diggersby, a very weird bulky um, Tyranitar, like literally I went relaxed nature to get the bulk that I wanted here and still be able to run Ice Beam for the Gligar. Uh, Banded Stotland, one thing that I did pick up and um, like just transactions there because I, I felt like the team was lacking a little bit of power. And a little bit more standard Alakazam because why not? Now the idea here was to really just get Stealth Rock damage, maybe a hit off on everything and then let Stoutling clean the team. Stoutling could one hit KO or two hit KO his entire team with a choice ban. So I, I really, it was really just a matter of, am I able, am I able, am I able, what is wrong with me? Am I able to put things in range for Stoutland? Now, I did lead off with my Rotom, expecting him to lead with Tapu Koko. Uh, I also thought it was possible that he would lead with Empoleon to get up his rocks early. But I was worried about his Empoleon having Aqua Jet. So I was like, alright, well if I have Rotom in against the Empoleon, I'm not going to leave it in there just because of that. But I did know if he led off with anything that was not weak to fire, like just neutral and he had Gligar in the back. I'm not clicking Volt Switch at the start just because I want to get off a strong hit. Little did I know, Kyurem coming in and taking all that damage. I was actually faster than the Kyurem because this is a very bulky Kyurem. But I thought he'd be faster than me and maybe go for a Draco Meteor. And my Araquanid could take that no problem. Uh, he does get to go for Roost here. He goes for Roost twice to get back up to full HP. And because of pressure, I'm actually down to three overheats. I did not have the resources for PP Max and PP Up. So I only had five overheats for this battle, and that's going to come into play later. I do take the time to Toxic this Kyurem, because again, my, I just wanted to whittle things. And I figured if he stayed in and attacked, I could trap him. And then I could just rest up and get my health back, and he's going for Draco Meteor, and it's not really bothering me at all. It's all good. He does go right on an Empoleon, and Empoleon is now trapped, and he reveals Swords Dance. And I was like, oh man, does he have Drill Peck? And I ran the calc, and I was like, okay, great, I can live a plus two Drill Peck. But what I neglected to do was put plus two into the calc. <laughs> so yeah, he just knocks out my Araquanid with Drill Peck. Um, I actually had a chance to live a plus two drill pick, but it was a very, very small, it was like a 90% roll to KO my Araquanid. So um, here my soak strategy backfires completely because I go out into Diggersby forgetting that he's soaked and I go for Earthquake. I could have gone for Wild Charge expecting Slowbro to come in, but I was I didn't want my the recoil from the Wild Charge to KO my Diggersby. And because he's no longer a Steel type, he's not weak to the ground type move and that had both Envy and I going, uh, do you have max happiness on your diggers B? Cause that, uh, that didn't like, he didn't do as much like, it's like you didn't give him enough poke beans or something, uh, which of course would not have any bearing on the damage output of earthquake, but that's just the mindset. It's like, did you train him? Did you put the attack EVs in there? Um, seeing the damage on Slowbro from a max, uh, attack choice bandit return, I know I have to have rocks up in order to 2 KO the Slowbro, but I needed to know what type of Slowbro he was running before I went through that whole um, ordeal. Unfortunately, he does pick up a Skull Burn on my Alakazam. I'm just, Alakazam is a magnet for status, and I didn't really expect that when I drafted it, but this thing stays toxic and burned, like I am unable to keep it away from those status afflictions. Uh, he does bring in his Gligar, and just the fact that he swapped in it at all means to me that he is more specially defensive and the psychic damage shows that. But I get a nice special defense drop, so that means he is forced out. I was very close to clicking Call Mind right there, but I didn't want him to just stay in an Earthquake. Uh, granted, he really needs Gligar for my team, but um, he does go out into the Silvali, which we find out is Silvali Dark, and the Modest Signal Beam does a ton of damage to his Silvali. Uh, Tailwind was not a strat I saw coming, I actually was fearing Pursuit, which is why I just stayed in and went for Signal Beam. But now that he stayed in there, I'm just going to swap out to my Tyranitar now, thinking that his multi-attack would be Dark, and then maybe a Coverage move, and he'd have a, a little bit of difficulty hitting me just because of how bulky this Tyranitar is. Multi-attack does negligible damage, 
and this Tyranitar has Choppleberry, which totally didn't help at all because he didn't bring anything that used a fighting move this whole match. Um, the flinch there actually really sucks because I was just going to go for my rocks and then swap out. But now Tyranitar is missing all this health. I do get my rocks up, but Tyranitar is at such a low amount of HP that I can maybe bring it in one more time to get up the, um, the Sandstorm. Uh, and after that I'm kind of SOL. But since I figure he's just going to keep on going for Iron Head, I can bring in my Rotom, take basically no damage from the Iron Head and then he'll get knocked out by the Sandstorm. And that's good because depending on what he brings in, I can just fire off another Choice Specs move here. Uh, he does go out to his Kyurem and I know, all right, I can basically, if he goes for like, I know he's not Specs because of the Roost, but if he goes for a Draco Meteor, I might be able to live it. But then this is where I get, we both get surprised might be outspeeding him. He's just a very bulky Kyurem. And I had enough speed for some other members on his team, not necessarily the Kyurem. Now he, he knows that I'm Specs and I'm locked into Overheat. So he goes out to his Slowbro. I was like, all right, maybe he'll go for Psychic. I'm gonna go out to my Alkazam, but he just goes for Skull because that's the sensible play. I have enough Fire type. My idea here was I could come in, live the hit, and then trace the Regenerator and swap back out. But the burn from earlier is able to take me out. That's the only reason I even risked that is because I really wanted the Regenerator to get more health on my Alkazam. Um, but here is a huge turning point in the battle where I was so close to clicking Overheat, expecting this Gligar to come in, but I only had one Overheat left, and if I used it up, then I wouldn't have any way to hit this Gligar. And I should have just clicked it, because now Gligar gets to go for a Roost and get his HP back, and all the damage that I've done there is undone. The Slowbro, of course, switched out and got the Regenerator, so that damage is undone as well. That was just, uh, I, I almost went down to the timer there trying to decide, is he going to swap into Gligar here? But that was basically a 50-50 that I lost out on right there. Uh, he does go for Earthquake here, and there's a little bit of a uh, weird stall war, because again, I still have the single Overheat left, and even if he is like a really specially defensive Gligar, um, it's going to hurt him. Uh, I was also afraid of missing my overheat, like, because I know he has Sandvel because I traced it earlier. And he's just going to keep on going for Earthquake, and I'm just going to stay in here going for Volt Switch, hoping that he swaps out. But um, he's just trying to catch something coming in. Now this is kind of pointless. I, I also had the, the purpose of making sure I let the Sandstorm run completely out before bringing back in Tyranitar. Because that way if I swap Tyranitar in on an Earthquake, and I would have the maximum amount of turns to have Stoutland really put damage on his team. Now, um, I do think Specs was the correct bring for this battle, but it would have been prudent to go ahead and grind for the resources to get eight overheats instead of only having five. Um, I just don't, I, I didn't like the extra pressure that that put on my playing style here. Now we do go out into Tyranitar, which is perfect. Uh, he gets a critical hit, doesn't really matter, because um, he's just going to be able to finish me off with a, an Earthquake here. And okay, now we're in a position where we can do some damage, because Stalin can come in. Yes he can. Do you like waffles? Do you like pancakes? Do you like French toast? Spoilers, I have Stalin by all three of those nicknames, so depending on your answer to those questions, that's really going to affect... Um, the way that you enjoy those breakfast foods. Now I knew with the Sandstorm and the Rocky Helmet, uh, excuse me, and the Stealth Rocks, I had no problem 2 KOing the Slowbro, and so I just needed to get the Slowbro out of the way. Uh, so that's Slowbro down, but what I neglected to take into account is that I, between all the whittling damage from things like the, the extra hit, the errant hit I took earlier, now everything's just in range for Aqua Jet from Empoleon. And there wasn't really anything I can do about it. Uh, and if I had just gone for a wild charge earlier, yes, that would have KO'd my Diggersby, but he also wouldn't have his Empoleon. So wild charge definitely was the right move early on, or alternatively just not soaking him because that was a waste of time. Anyways, um, the idea there was to soak him, of course, trap him, and toxic him was the idea. 
didn't quite pan out. I still think it was an interesting set to bring against Envy. Against Envy, you really have to um, bring more creative sets. If you go at him with the doldrums of what's just on Smogon, then he is going to play around that all day. So I had fun. That is the Hydreigon header upload that I wanted to bring you all for the last three weeks. Thank you for bearing with me. <sighs> That's three losses, three more losses for the Victorian Shadows. Um, not great, really not great. Granted, I think there was only one of those battles where I felt like I played really poorly and then just having basically no prep against Wolfie and bringing the wrong item, I just kneecapped myself basically. And I finally got my legs up underneath me for MV. I thought that I played that match a lot better. Let me know what you all think. As far as the uploads go, they I fully intend for them to be on time. I decided to stop pestering the person that I was pestering for uploads because he wasn't able to get them to me on time and I felt like I was really imposing too much on him when he had so much going on. And so, uh, for example, for these three uploads, the quality was different because the common dude, one of the analysts for the GBA, was friendly enough to gen everything for me and as far as like getting the, did I just say gen? He was uh, rendering everything for me, excuse me, I don't know why I said gen. Um, but uh, I'm really thankful for his time and getting all those together for me, especially the battle with Wolfie. That was a really long match. So I imagine I taxed his resources a little bit on his PC there, getting that all recorded and uploaded and all that good stuff. Um, the next matchup we have is uh, our rematch against the Tampa Bay Luxrays and Manatui. We lost to him earlier on in the season, and this time with Metagross and Stoutland, for example, we have a few different tools. Um, we even have a new Z user in our Metagross for this week. I transferred those points from Executor over when I dropped it. So Metagross is our new Z user alongside Lycanroc. Man, this was a long upload. I do not like long uploads like this, but I definitely do like that you guys hung in there. If you're still listening, you might have tapped out, gone to get water somewhere in the middle. I completely understand. Look forward to the next upload on Sunday. Now that I even have, I even got a phone so that I can record if I need to. My other phone has a huge crack in it, so I wasn't even able to record things on my own end because the pressure on the screen is weird and it always deselects the camera. I have a lot of excuses this week for you guys, and that's not my style. So what I will say is, look forward to the week upload on time. Look forward to me being even more thoughtful about the way that I'm approaching these battles. We are getting down to the last four weeks of the season and the Victorian Shadows have not picked up a single win. And that is not for lack of me trying, but, um, between forgetting items, forgetting PP maxes and PP ups, that is for lack of focus. So we need to make a change there. I really do like the changes to the team, um, but I, I just can't let this season go down without a single victory. So <laughs> prepare yourselves as I figure out a way to grab that victory however I can. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day, a great night, and I will see you all in the next upload. Thank you for your time. Goodbye now.